Welcome back to Attack of the Show. We are live and talking the death of PC gaming. Before the break, we asked you if PC gaming is dead. Well, according to you, 65% of you think that PC gaming is alive and kicking and agree with me. Well, let's go over to our resident night elf warrior, Mr. Kevin Pereira. All right, thanks, Olivia. Look, PC gaming can be a frustrating beast. You know, while games are always improving, they often require the latest and greatest video cards and processors to perform without choppy graphics or even hard crashes. And now with the 360 and the PlayStation 3 vowing to rule your life, are the days of the gaming PC number? Hmm. Control out delete. It's the loop. Note that on a standard keyboard, that was the proper distance for the control out delete. I'm just saying. Joining me now, editorial coordinator for Tips and Tricks magazine, Abby Happy, and Manifesto Games CEO Greg Kostikian is here. Thanks for joining us in the loop, folks. Greg, this conversation happens all the time. It seems like every year now, it seems multiple times a year, people are saying, PC games, man, where are they going? They're selling less and less. I mean, mm -hmm. what do you think, Greg? I mean, have consoles finally surpassed PC games? Uh, I, I think the thing you have to keep in mind is even though the sales of PC games at conventional retail have declined precipitously over the last five years, we've also seen the emergence of the casual games market, which is 300 million plus, uh, and the uh, kind of subscription revenue to massively multiplayer online games, which is over a billion dollars. Uh, and also, I think, increasing interest in kind of the independent games movement. Um, so I don't think it's true that PC gaming is fine. Don't you think the same kind of stuff with the Xbox 360, the live arcade, and being able to download? You know, those sort of games like Geometry Wars has been hugely popular on consoles. Sure, Bejeweled is now out in high def on the 360 as well. So, mm -hmm. I mean, Abby, what do you think? Aside from, from the, the casual games, the pop cap games of the world and the world of Warcraft, are you picking PCs or consoles when it comes to your gaming? Definitely consoles. I mean, when it comes to PC, what is it more than World of Warcraft at this point? Um, it's, you know. you've, you have, you've got just as good... Uh, graphics are going to get to the point where, if, unless you're using some sort of microscope that I don't have access to, you're not going to be able to tell the difference between your PC and your console. Plus, you'll be spending a lot of money, even though the price point on the PS3 seems high. It's still cheaper than putting together your own graphics card on your computer, yeah. building your, your PC I, I, for I, I gaming. Think, I think graphics is kind of not the point with games in general at, at this point. Uh, with both PCs and with consoles, we've gotten to the point where graphics are good enough and people are no longer really going to be competing on that basis. What we have to be moving towards now is creating original gameplay uh, and coming up with essentially whole new genres of games. So where's and the Guitar Hero for the PC? And where's, you know... Well, look, but basically all the innovation in gameplay that's going on on consoles is uh, in, in hardware innovation. Um, and if your idea of innovative gameplay is blowing into a microphone, then yeah, you should be uh, going for, for consoles. Well, great, but great. Let, let, me, let me stop you there, because that, that is something that I, I have been wrestling with, and, and that I used to be the biggest defender when it came to the PC platform, especially mm -hmm. because of the in develop, uh, independent games and the garage game type developers. Right. But now, I mean, I have seen the guitar controllers. I have seen uh, touch-sensitive screens. Mm -hmm. you know, I have seen uh, you know, games that, that have uh, motion sensitivity now with the Wii or the PlayStation 3 controller. So uh, in, aside from graphics, how can the PC be more innovative? What, what is going on on the PC side of things that, that is trumping any of that? Okay, but again, you're looking at technology. What I'm saying, on the console side, a developer essentially has to go through two layers uh, of potential, potential censorship, uh, both on the console manufacturer and on, on the part of a publisher. PC is an open platform. I don't need to get permission from Sony to develop, it, develop for it. If I've got a really cool idea for a game, I can go out there and try to find an audience. But I, I think that they've that really the been trying to open up things like the 360 for third-party developers and have cheaper developers make, you know, be able to put their games onto those onto those consoles. Plus, I, I don't think that you can just push off the hardware. I think it's a really important part. It's getting integrated so much into gameplay with the DS, with, you know, with the Wii controllers. And, and PC can't compete with that at this point. Well, I'm, I'm all for innovation and gameplay, however it comes through, and I think it's great uh, that, say, the Wii has the, the kind of controller that it does. But still, fundamentally, when I come down to play a game, it's not my ability to wave something through the air or strum a guitar that gets me interested in the game. It's how are, you know, what are the game mechanics, how are they combined in new ways, what's novel and interesting about this game. Um, and I don't think you can get that out of hardware. Now, Abby, what, now, there is something to be said for massively multiplayer games. You know, they've been trying to bring these types of games and real-time strategy games to consoles for years. Mm -hmm. They've never had any success. With those two genres alone, can you possibly discount PC gaming when, when in the foreseeable future nothing's going to trump that on the console side? Um, I, I know that they're developing those kind of games for consoles at this point, and you know, whether they're going to be as successful as World of Warcraft, which kind of had you know, the, the advantage, got out there, it, it's what everybody's playing at this point for PC, but I'm not seeing any, anything else innovative come out of the PC. I'm seeing the same games ported 
to both, and they're going to do a Warhammer game for the 360 for these mm. consoles. I, I can't really say what the popularity of those games well, in fact, is going to be of, yet. This is one of the basic problems the PC uh, games industry has faced over the last few years, is that as budgets have grown so enormously, uh, publishers have to uh, ameliorate their costs by releasing on multiple platforms, which means they're really developing for console games first. In essence, PC gamers have been getting Xbox's sloppy seconds. Uh, so if you well, want is to that, isn't that is that then not a dec uh, you know a sign of the coming apocalypse that is PC gaming when when no, developers sign, are focusing on the console? That's a sign of the problem with the conventional retail channel. But as games start to move more and more through online distribution, the need to have those kind of million plus unit sales uh, and high budgets I think diminishes, and you you get kind of the long tail effect that we see in music, uh, where there can be products that are popular uh, with a you know with a niche audience, but popular enough to justify. Uh, the creation of the product by the 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 the, uh, the creators in the first place. Well, I think finally we have to talk about the price issue here because this is, I mean, casual games aside, which I believe, you know, PlayStation 3 is coming with the browser. The moment they get flash on that, the entire casual game market is then immediately accessible by the console world. So I, I don't want to I don't want to diminish that point too much, but I, I believe that's going to be the near future. But let's look at the the barrier of entry here. People are complaining about a $600 PlayStation 3, mm -hmm. but last time I checked. A single graphics card alone could cost you that much. Abby, do you think price is a factor when it comes to PC games? Absolutely. Um, I, you know, I kind of gawked at the price when I saw the PS3 at first, too. And, but when I compare what you get on the PS3 compared to what you get, you know, building a graphics card, building your you know, computer to play games, it, it seems a lot more reasonable. And, you know, the, yeah. the Wii isn't going to cost as much as that. And the 360 is already down to about 400 at this point. It's, it, and the graphics are great. The games are great. Right. What, do you, what do you think about I, the price I, issue? I think the cost of PCs is essentially a non-issue. Firstly, it used to be that there was a much greater disparity of cost. A piece, even like a standard PC would set you back $3,000 and a console cost $200. For $600, you can get a PC that will play just about anything other than Doom 3, the really high-end games at this point. All right. Um, I've I got to thank Abby and Greg for joining us and keeping us in the loop. Look, personally, I, I said it a thousand times, I used to be ultra-hardcore with regard to PC gaming. But when it came time to choose between a new gaming rig or a next-gen console, Honestly, I traded in the mouse and keyboard, and I pocketed the difference. And now I just show my junk to unsuspecting Uno players on Xbox Live. If that's not the future of digital entertainment, I don't know what is. Let's go over to our very own next-gen hero, Miss Olivia Munn. Thanks, Kev. Please don't ever show me your junk. Still ahead, we'll tell you how you can listen to Howard Stern again. Welcome back to Attack of the Show. We are coming to you live, unlike your Xbox, tomorrow. That is right. Xbox Live will be shut down all day tomorrow for maintenance and cleaning. But don't worry, Kevin, uh, you still got your video game fix. Of course I do. It's Monday, and that means it's time to give you the cheat codes on the gaming stories that matter the most. IDDQD. Mm -hmm. It's a game break. <laughs> I was partial to IDKFA myself. Oh, yeah. yeah one yeah. of the best. One of the best. Those are, yeah, anyway, yammer. Yeah, here to discuss the gaming matters is the video game expert and X-Play co-host, Adam Sessler. Thanks for coming on, Adam. A pleasure to be here. I'm going to yammer for one second. Exactly. Right. <laughs> Let's get into it. Pre-orders for Nintendo's Wii console became available for the first time last week. And, of course, as expected, gaming retail stores around the country sold out very, very quickly. Now, this is on the heels of the PlayStation 3 pre-order as well. So, Adam, were you in line for any of them? Were you camping nope. out with your Campbell's soup? Nope. Your sleeping bag? Nope. Your three-season tent? Nope. Not yeah, I don't pre-order. Pre-order, it's like, no. It's like, no. It's just, it's ridiculous. A, I have a job to do during the day, and so, like, True. I can't exactly be camping out there. Uh, B, it's, it's still, as much as I play games, that kind of retail sycophancy is a little bit embarrassing. It's just, you know, it's, Well, what's, wow. what's more embarrassing, someone camping out in front of an EB Games for, for 10 hours to get a pre-order, or someone going on eBay and spending $1,500, literally up to over a grand and a half, on a ticket for a pre-order, which was happening until the Anonymity is always less embarrassing, you know, <laughs> camping on the street, you think homeless, but no, it's actually, you can spend $600 on this item. I mean, yeah, people are doing it. I think all people camping out there were trying to resell it on eBay because of these, these astronomical prices. I mean, right. you still have a shot of getting it at one of the big box stores like Best Buy or Target or something like sure. that, but uh, it's going to be tough to get one of these things on the launch day. I, I, I think that is just, that is now a stated fact. Sure, I don't think anybody was expecting it to be easy, though. I mean, I don't no, think it's a surprise no. thing. Do, do you think it's a good thing that, that these auctions are being taken off of eBay? I, I, I think so, because at least it will stop encouraging people from buying it for the sole purpose of turning it around. Right. You know, it's just, obviously, eBay can do what it wants to do. I, I, I find the whole thing just kind of, like, obnoxious to begin with. Right. I, I just want one. And yeah. I want one without pain. Oh, that's, that's a whole other exactly. hurdle. Exactly. This is Adam Sessler saying that. Yeah. I don't think I will. 
Now, everyone from IGN to indie games blogs like uh, Destructoid.com, one of my, my favorites out there, they're reporting that lawyer Jack Thompson was denied in court last Friday. In fact, a Florida judge, uh, Ronald Friedman, he's officially cleared Take-Two's bully for publication in that great little state of theirs. So now, is this a victory for the developer, for the consumer, for both? Should we still care about no, no, no. Jack Thompson? If anyone actually thought this court was going to agree with Thompson, right. really, my biggest question is, and this is for the Florida Bar Association, why does Jack Thompson have a license to practice law? <laughs> I mean, look, aren't these the frivolous lawsuits that are always like the basis of somebody's political campaign every two years? Frivolous lawsuits. This is about the worst one ever. It had a T rating. Right. The judge saw it. He's like, yeah, I don't like the game, but yeah, you can play the game. It's part of American First Amendment rights. Well, ah! well, I would say, I would say, well, clearly then, this is the nail in Jack Thompson's coffin, but I thought we've said that 400 this times man in this guy's history. big coffin. <laughs> That's all I can say. It's like, this is, I mean, back, back during the two life crew where you thought, oh, we're never going to hear from this crackpot again. I don't know. It's kind of like one of those Ultraman ones where, like, the more you attack the creature, the more powerful it The more powerful comes. it gets, yeah. I mean, it's like, we just need to ignore him. Need, we need to be official moratorium on talking about Jack Thompson. See, I don't know. Maybe I think, he'll go away. I think we ignore them, and then that's when some local news or even a major news outlet right. starts paying attention to them. Actually, that's, that's I, I, I put concern. most of the onus on local news that can't report actual news and have uh, to jump on these kind of stories because there's nothing you can really sell to more than, you know, terrify well, suburban parents. Hey, you can't have the water skiing squirrel every day. There was. We wouldn't have to report I'll on Jack Thompson. I'll hire more squirrels. We can keep Jack Thompson out of the news. <laughs> All right. They're one and the same, really, when you get down to it. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Adam. We're going to give you your fix of gaming stories every Monday right here on The Game Break. When we come back, Will O'Neill shows you the gadgets of the future when he takes you inside the Tech Expo Digital Life. Stay with us. The future awaits, and it doesn't involve a BIS and sports almanac. That's very dangerous. We have been testing the new on okay, This is my will, ready? Okay, now, yeah, there we go, there we go. <laughs> Welcome back to a live attack of the show. Now, leading us, uh, leading into us today, it wasn't Spock uh, Xing people, no, nope. it was the Jamie Kennedy experiment, and it made its return to television right here on G4. Mm -hmm. Pranks, victims, degrading gags, and the satisfaction that none of that is happening to you if you missed tonight's episode. Here's a peek. Fanny, uh, this is Mr. Dobbs, and I'll be back with you guys in a second. You can just have a seat. about what we do here. Um, Matanatrix has been around for about 10 years now. Um, I know, that was pretty good, actually. <laughs> <laughs> you, should, you, you should host, the next time you do an interview, go to, you know, go interview some big star, you should do that. Pull it back? Yeah. yeah I don't know about that. G4 <laughs> is uh, serving up two back-to-back -back episodes of the Jamie Kennedy Experiment every weeknight at 6. Got to tune in. <laughs> now, the Digital Life Convention was held in New York last week, and it's like the choice selection of tech yeah. and entertainment, all under one convenient roof. Uh, Will O'Neill's desk is a close second to this. <laughs> I know. It's like a freaking disaster there. There's so <laughs> many tech things there. It's kind of awesome. You could steal something. He'd never know. Now, speaking <laughs> of Will, our resident tech guru was there at that Digital Life Expo, and he checked out the latest gizmos and gadgets that you're going to want to have. Here's Will at Digital Life. We're here at Jacob Javits Center in New York City to check out this holiday's latest, greatest innovations and basically anything with a power switch. It's all happening at Digital Life. When you come to a show like Digital Life, you're going to see a lot of really cool products, but you're also going to see a lot of really stupid gimmicks. That's not the case with the Mio Digi personal navigation system. Essentially what it is, is it's a GPS that you can actually fit in your pocket. It runs Windows CE, it has all North America and about a thousand points of interest. It has an SD slot, so you can put like a four gigabyte SD card in there, 500 bucks, they should be shipping soon. Because here we are roaming the main streets of New York, the last thing we need is to have some punk jack our iPods on the subway. The iLocker iPod security system from I2E, your iPod's gonna stay your iPod. They actually code it with a nylon coating, so it won't scratch your iPod. They have models for the Mini, the Nano, the 30 gig. They're about 30 bucks. Very cool product. It's 
very good little gadget that's actually useful. Now, there's one trend that I've been following for a long time now are convergence products. You know, cell phones that also take pictures. But this little baby here is something really unique I've never seen before. It's a watch, but it also doubles as a Bluetooth headset. Right on your wrist, you get a call, you pop it off, push a button, and you talk. When you're done with your call, just drop it back in. It comes in analog and digital formats, and it's about $120 to $130. Bucks. I'm here checking out the hot seat surround sound and video gaming chassis. What they do is for flight sims and racing games, they're a method of totally immersing you in the gameplay. That surround sound, if a subwoofer beneath your butt, 500 bucks gets you the basic chassis, which is just a chair and the surround sound speakers. They can even go all the way up to 3,500 bucks where you get like the full on flight sim situation. It's pretty awesome. I've been rocking media center PCs for some time now. The Alienware DHS A series takes it to an entirely different level. There's a 1,000 watt amp built in, a lot of support for HD, HD recording, AC playback, HDMI outputs as well. It starts at about 1,000 bucks. So we've seen a little bit of the future, and all I gotta say is this looks dope. For you, Santa, I haven't actually been a good boy this year, so uh, I'm gonna use my own credit card and go use it. Later, Santa. Okay, well, those are some really cool things. Good the watch, time. Bluetooth thing, yeah. love that. Now, yeah. what? I'm guessing this is the coolest gadget you found there, because I'm, I'm holding because it right holding, here. Because you're holding it? Well, actually, uh, there, are, there are quite a few cool gadgets. They just actually mm -hmm. gave me this one. So. Oh, they did? Yeah, it's pretty okay. cool, actually. You know, I actually have one of these. Okay. This, uh, this yeah. holds so much stuff on this. It's Tell great, everybody yeah. what it is. It's the uh, Seagate Pocket Hard Drive. It's a six gigabyte drive. It's, it's great though, it has a USB 2.0, so mm -hmm. it works with Macs and PCs. It's really fast. It actually has a spinning hard drive in it. Um, it's pretty cool. Yeah. And it, it comes in a, you know, various sizes. They have an eight gigabyte version as well that's silver. And this but this is six. That's six. six but the pink one is special because 10% of the proceeds goes towards breast cancer. Which nice. is ironic because I'm going to pack mine full of porn. Well, you know, they, uh, porn is breast, so that's very good for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Thanks so much, Will. Good ladies. Now, uh, right now, let's swing on it over to uh, Kevin. Still coming up, we've got the female version of Ultraman, and this woman, she kind of wields a, a wicked hoover. We've got plenty more on TV's only source for all the stuff you care about. If you haven't been watching Attack of the Show, this is what you're missing. For more info, go to g4tv.com slash AOTS. Attack. Attack of the Show. Attack.